Hello world, welcome to the latest colorful look inside the creative mind. Always to start your venture is your painter of words, Samuel Willavale Cornelius. Artists come in many shapes and sizes. They are dabblers of the crafty, creators of the beauty, and most of all, bloomers of the abstract analogy. They find techniques to find new ways to view the world itself. They are the true innovators of thought. Our guest innovator today is a man of many trades. From murals, tattoos, and body paint, Mr. John Gallegos has been around and seen a lot. Initially coming to Vegas to make a living off of tattoos, Mr. Gallegos decided that body paint held more interest for him. In this episode, we will watch as he paints a biomechanical arm with this rather interesting spray paint-like contraption. So buckle in, prepare to have your views changed, and please enjoy as we explore this particularly interesting creative mind. My name is John Gallegos. I'm from Ogallala, Nebraska. I currently live here in Las Vegas, Nevada. In Nebraska, I was raised from the age of 12. Did a lot of construction work and so forth, and eventually it got to where I was painting murals, and I painted uh, stages and uh, exterior wall murals for different companies. Cultural shock from Nebraska, yes. There was, uh, this is the city versus the town. Uh, it, it's, it's pretty crazy out here, but uh, I don't think there's any other place I could do the different mediums. The first week I was sculpting in styrofoam. Uh, a week later I was body painting, uh, and then in between painting a wall mural for the Clark County uh, Department. So it's uh, a lot of different uh, projects out here. I came out here originally to get my tattoo license. I thought I'd do a six month apprenticeship and uh, travel around afterwards. What got me into the body painting more so was the doors that opened. Uh, it, it being such a new thing, uh, it allowed me to paint for, let's say, absinthe down on uh, Caesar's Palace. Well, what got me started in it, to even look at it as a career, I suppose was uh, when I was in the service, I drove for the officers and what have you. And during the time, one of them discovered my sketchbook and looked through it and consequently sent me over to the art department for Third Armor Division. I didn't even know there was an art department in the military, but evidently there was. I was there for, uh, to then, uh, my stay. Once I got out of there, I went to uh, Colorado Institute of Art and uh, began really looking at it as a career. Um, it's taken me down a lot of different roads, did a lot of traveling. Um, I've got to paint for some incredible individuals. I've created for Boeing Aerospace to uh, US Army to uh, Paramount Studios, uh, Absinthe down here in Vegas, uh, Electric Daisy Carnival, um, so many different projects. What it did do was introduce me to other artists, and amongst them was uh, a director named uh, Deborah Richards, and she brought me into film work. She owns 1905 Film Studios. Uh, from there, I was asked to do uh, a mermaid body paint for a, a short film. 
And two films later, we find ourselves winning uh, four student Emmys for a small sci-fi film we worked on where uh, I got listed as art director, so that was a real nice surprise. Uh, for the film, I created uh, the special effects, uh, some of the uh, set design, and probably foremost was the spaceship models. So some of the art that I do, uh, it varies from wrapping a vehicle uh, with vinyl graphics these days. Maybe it'll be uh, tattooing somebody since I did achieve my license. But these days, model making, body painting, set design, even, even some uh, special effects uh, have been some of the requests here lately. Well, these days, uh, for a living, I guess you'd consider me a freelance artist. Um, when the studio does need me, I, I'll go ahead and uh, handle any kind of props I need. Currently, I'm going to be doing uh, scenic artwork uh, down on the strip. And uh, today I'm going to show you guys uh, uh, how to body paint uh, a biomechanical design on a gentleman. Explaining the process of body painting. Well, for one, is it's not so much paint, it's makeup. Um, and in this case, doing the biomechanical, we're going, I'm going to try to give the illusion that on the back side there's a, a glass case exposing the gears behind it. So we're messing with shadows, depths, stuff like that. It's simple, but it allows you to do a lot of detail in a small area. It's hard on the model in the way of sitting still. It's something we take for granted. I give uh, a lot of credit to models because in most cases, once we're done painting them for three, four hours, then they have to go to work with the body paint. So. Yes, a lot of credit goes to models for being able to put up with us. Hello. Well, we're getting ready to do a biomechanical design on our model here. Let me introduce you to Max Dakota. He's going to uh, sit for us and I'm going to turn him into a cyborg. So what we're getting ready to do here is the basic layout of the hard edges for the biomechanical design. I'm going to map it out with some blue tape real quick so that I can uh, airbrush freely and leave hard edges and do some subtle uh, drop shadows and stuff like that. So I'm going to get ready to hit this with uh, some black, which is going to lay out the hard edges of the design. So here I'm going to implement the sprocket idea in this. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fog this in a little bit in here deciding that's my color of my sprocket and then I'm going to place this here and I'm going to go with darker behind it. I'm putting a, I'm putting a piston down the center of his spine so that I can uh, incorporate the other mechanical side to it. Uh, when people have tattoos, uh, if they want to hide them, we can mix up uh, some flesh tone to actually just hide them. Uh, otherwise, we use a white base coat 
and just go over them and then continue on with the, the color we want. Here's a little black, solid black here, and tighten up the lines here so that it's not just my airbrush that created the edge. So the effect I'm doing right now is to kind of create a, a roughed up metal effect so it, uh, it doesn't just look brand new. Headed towards his uh, shoulders, so I'm going to put some pieces here. So I'm going to use this tattoo that's already existing and see if I can get this just the right angle. ready to traverse his armpit and we're going to bring it around the front and we're going to make this panel bigger than they are. So I'm going to map that out like so. Okay. I'm going to be setting up the design for his face here. So placing it like so. Doing good? Yep. I'm gonna just kind of map out where is it gonna go. Made a quick stencil, uh, really fast. If you, uh, you need you need a certain angle or a certain something, you can usually just cut it out real quick out of some paper. You're only going to use it a couple of times. I'm going with the idea of uh, computer ribbon cable. So by putting white down first, I'm able to follow up with a blue, which would come out brighter and, and, and more uh, outstanding using the white as a base coat. So not only am I doing highlights, I'm preparing for the, the brighter colors. Right now I'm adding the blue. It's gonna give it a blue uh, metallic uh, effect here. So, uh, 
We just finished up here with uh, Max Dakota. And what we have here is a little design we decided on. I hope you all enjoyed the viewing, understand what I was saying. And uh, we're just gonna put a little setting on him for you so he can wear it all the way out the door and party it up in Las Vegas tonight. Am I happy with it? Yes, very happy with the design. It looks good. Um, he's, uh, he doesn't have to worry about it rubbing off too much in certain areas. Simple, but uh, eye-catching still. It'll come off with uh, alcohol or uh, body or baby oil. Um, a lot of the, the body paints uh, are becoming water-based, so just soap and water. I do one probably every couple of weeks, uh, a large one, head to toe. Um, more so, I guess, I get requests to do uh, uh, face painting and so forth, smaller stuff. Oh. After holding the airbrush for a while, yes, it can uh, cramp your hand up. Uh, 25 years of doing it, though, it helps. But um, what's interesting is in the past, I'm ambidextrous. So I've had to actually paint with my left hand in order to finish the job. But you do what you gotta do. I think the techniques I've learned through the years is don't get too solid on any one way. Be flexible. Um, there's always going to be curveballs. It could be anything from the model is wearing lotion and the paint's not going to stick right to anything. You never know. So play it pretty, pretty uh, light, but have a plan and give yourself enough time to recover if there is any hitches in the plan. Um, You'll see me using just about anything for a stencil, and that's the way it goes. You, it, it could be the cover of a magazine and an exacto blade, and because why are you going to run around and try to find the perfect thing? Create the perfect thing, make it work for you. I'm listed on uh, Model Mayhem online. It's an online group, a website connecting photographers, artists, and models. It's really great, it, you get a lot of uh, different resources there. You can visit my website, artofjohng.weebly.com. Uh, my phone number is listed there. When I first got to town, I learned to network, and it's really paid off knowing other artists. And I think that has been a key to a lot of connections here and to a lot of jobs is the networking. I've, I've helped other artists as well as they've helped me. When I uh, started airbrushing here in town, I was airbrushing with a group of airbrush artists down at the Premium Outlet Mall. Once that ended, we all went our separate ways, but stayed in contact. So due to everybody branching out into different mediums, we all started interacting again on our own. And to this day, we all stay in contact, but everybody's done other things. For instance, one now owns a screen print shop. One is doing web design and traveling the world. I think uh, final wrap of vehicles, that being a new kid on the block right now. Uh, I've been getting a lot of work with that. Uh, having airbrushed cars for years, it's kind of nice to not take a week to see a finished product 
but to see it done in one day, that's kind of amazing for me. I, I have a good time with that. But um, the body painting, like I'm doing for you today, very seasonal, um, unless you're working in the convention side of it. So uh, once again, that if you want to stay in a creative field, diversification is the key. How did I learn to do the multimedia side of it? I guess it was by not saying no. Uh, research. Um, you just take what you learned from the last job, you apply it towards the next job, and before you know it, you are bringing new information to the next project. And I think that's what made me a little different, where I was able to cross some of the mediums to achieve something that most people couldn't at the time and made them notice me. My name is John Gallegos and thank you for going inside my creative mind.